Hey everybody, how's it going? So today I'd like to read an article and uh, get some of your thoughts on it. I'm not really going to be getting into any of this from the standpoint of an economist or a scientist or somebody who's well informed when it comes to finance, but this article has to do with people's perception of how things are going, and I thought as an idiot I would give my, my uh, perception and just talk about that a little. So let me switch over. Here we go. So this is an article called How Is the U.S. Economy Doing? by Paul Krugman in the New York Times. So it says last week's unemployment report was puzzling. The Bureau of Labor Statistics carries out two separate surveys, one of employers and another of households. We normally expect the two to paint a similar picture. This time, not so much. The employer survey was, to use the technical term, meh. 210,000 job added, a respectable number, but not what many had hoped for. The household survey, however, was terrific. In particular, the employment rate among prime-age adults, a key measure of labor market health, is beginning to approach pre-pandemic levels. Well, we shouldn't make too much of the apparent inconsistencies in the report. Noisy data happens, and overall, the economic picture looks pretty good. Indeed, in many ways, this looks like the best economic recovery in decades. Yet consumers appear to be feeling very downbeat, or at least that's what they tell surveys like the famous Michigan Survey of Consumers. And this perception of a bad economy is clearly weighing on President Biden's approval rating which raises the question, are consumers right? Is this a bad economy despite data showing it is very good? And if it, isn't really, if it really isn't a bad economy, why does the public say it is? Just to be clear, I genuinely want to know the answer to these questions. I don't think it's a crude case of people be, are being lied to by the corporate media, although if you ask me, it's silly when people in the media get all huffy over any suggestion that how they report in the economy has an influence on public perceptions. If it doesn't, why do they bother? So what's going on? Let's start with the obvious culprit, inflation, which is indeed running hotter than it has for decades. Rising prices have certainly eroded many workers' wage gains, although real personal income per capita is still above a pre-pandemic level, even though the government is no longer handing out a lot of money. And my sense is that inflation has a corrosive effect on confidence even when incomes are keeping up because it creates the perception that things are out of control. He brings up the fact that people are making more now than before. How does your financial situation compare with five years earlier? 63% say they're better off, the same number as in September 1984, just before Ronald Reagan won an electoral landslide with claims that it's morning in America. So he asked for an answer. Why do people think that things are worse, even if jobs numbers are good and people are doing better? So I, I can't answer what everybody else thinks. I, I can only answer from my personal perspective. So for me, I am doing better now than I was five years ago. And I'm doing way better now than I was 10 years ago. And 10 years ago, I was doing considerably better than I was 13 years ago. So why do people feel like the economy is worse even if jobs numbers are up and people are making more money? Me individually, I am technically doing better now than I was five years ago. And I'm doing way better now than I was 10 years ago. But the way that I could, the best way I can describe it is 13 years ago, I felt like I was kind of, uh, being carried in the bed of a flatbed truck on the ride up. And now I kind of feel like I have a first class seat for the, the ride down. I, just to give you an example of this. So when he says that wage gains are keeping up, I don't, you know, people are talking about inflation, but they're making more money and there's more jobs. When you look at some of the largest ex expenses in people's lives or what the quote American dream is, you know, the house and a wife and two kids and, uh, you know, the, the white picket fence and all that shit that they talk about in the 1950s. Uh, when you talk about the things that, that, that you know, that, you're, that are supposed to be a part of the quote American dream, they are... Get, like it's kind of like the carrot is actually running away from you faster than you can catch up with it. So let's just take a home. You know, when I was younger, I used to think a million dollars bought you a badass house. Like it bought you this super rich dude looking mansion. And now again, I'm to be clear, I'm not, I'm not saying that I wouldn't love to live in a place that looks like this. I would be happy as a pig and shit to live in a place like this. But when you look at this, like in your heart of hearts, as someone that grew up in the 90s or even the 2000s, is this the living room of a house that's within $50,000 of being a million after closing costs? Like, is that a million dollar living room to you? When you look at this and you bought a house for a million dollars, is that the living room that you're expecting to get for a million bucks? And there's more and more parts of the country where $1 million buys you something like this, which again, to be clear, I'd have no problem living here. I think it's a totally fine place to live. Is that is that a million dollars? Like no. 
And if you take a look at any of these websites where they go over what housing prices are, you'll see something like this. And I see this over and over again. 2016, sold for 300000 2019, sold for 450000 2021, sold for 700000 But let's say that, you know, if you look at a house that sold a few years ago or that w its value was approximately three hundred k and now a few years later it's five hundred k did your salary go up? commensurate with that? Like, did your salary go from like $30 an hour to 50 bucks an hour? When we're talking about wage gains, are we talking about wage gains of 20 or 30% each year? Probably not. So when you're in that stage of inflation where you just kind of see things making that little GameStop curve from January of 2021, that's going to scare people and that's going to shock them. You know, when you go to the store and, you know, a set of meat that you used to buy before that was $5 is now $8, you're looking at yourself and like, fuck, Prices have went up 30 or 40% on this particular item. Fuck, the price of the house that I was looking at has went up by 35 or 40% since I decided that I was going to start saving for it. And when that happens, does it really matter if a couple more of the people in your neighborhood are employed? Does it really matter if the... You're looking at it from the standpoint of people are making a little bit more money and you have less people that are unemployed. So why are people complaining? Well, you simply have more people that are in the rat race but that doesn't necessarily correlate to the quality of that rat race. Again, if you have more people in the rat race, but the distance between them and the carrot was here, and now the distance between them and the carrot is here, you're now just going to have that many more people in that rat race that feel like they're fucked. Whereas if you're looking at it from the standpoint of, well, we have good jobs numbers or good employment numbers, again, that just means that you have more people, but that are still further away from the carrot than they would have been in the rat race, let's say, five or ten years ago. And I think that that has a lot to do with it. Because when I look at my personal situation, I am way better off now than I was in 2009. I am infinitely better off now than I was in 2009 when I started this business. But I can't shake that feeling in my head that right now I have a first class seat in a beautiful plane that's crashing. Whereas in 2009, I felt like I had a seat in the back of some 1980s, you know, Ford F-150 where I was under a blanket getting, you know, smuggled across state lines. The trajectory, where I was heading, regardless of the fact that the ride that I could afford was shit, my trajectory was a good place. And now, like, even if you have more money, again, if you're making more money and, you're, and you have a better job, but you have a lot of parts of the country where really average mediocre kind of homes are closing in on a million dollars or ridiculous rates like that, uh, that's going to affect how people think. So, you know, the number of people employed does not have to do with the distance between the carrot and the stick, which I would argue is greater now than it was several years ago. Um, at, at least in my situation, the distance between the carrot and the stick is, is a, it seems like it's getting greater and greater. And the fact that I'm learning how to run faster doesn't mean that I'm confident that the carrot hasn't learned how to run even faster by a larger margin than I have. Another clue you get is very different answers when you ask people, how are you doing, rather than how is the economy go doing? The larger consumer confidence index asks people separately about the national economy, where their assessment is dismal, and about their personal financial situation, where their rating is high by historical standards. The Michigan surveys don't quite ask the same questions, but they do ask people how their current financial situation compares with five years earlier. 63% say they're better off, the same number as in September 1984, just before Ronald Reagan won an electoral landslide with claims that it was morning in America. Aside from looking at what people say, surely it makes sense to look at what they do. If consumers are really as depressed as the sentiment numbers say, why are retail sales numbers running so high? I would say that people, and this is from my personal experience in life, I know people that have told me, you know, one of the things that motivates me to do things is actually owning expensive stuff. I'm not saying that this is right. I'm not saying that this is, maybe we should support Paul Daniels or maybe we shouldn't. Uh, I'm not saying that this is right financially. I'm not saying that this is a good path, but I do know that I've known several people in my life that motivate themselves to do better by purchasing or leasing something or renting something that they cannot afford and then working their ass off to, to be able to afford this thing that they are renting or purchase that they cannot afford. And, you know, I'm not saying that this is a good thing, but it is common. I know people that when they're depressed, they spend money. Honestly, just on the Dave Ramsey show just yesterday, because I was looking this up before doing reading this article, I would listen to the segment before doing this, and there was a woman that said, I'm very anxious. I have anxiety. When I'm anxious, I buy shit. I don't think that people going out and buying retail stuff necessarily means that they feel great about the economy. Maybe they think, oh shit, 
the price of everything is going up, I should buy the things that I want now before they get more expensive. For instance, uh, Tesla has actually been caught selling cars without the USB-C ports, and they didn't even fucking tell their customers. Eli, the computer guy, has gone over how uh, if you wanted to buy um, a particular, I think it was like a Raspberry Pi or something, the supplier that he buys them from, he used to buy them multiple at a time for, for his workshops, and now he is limited to buying one at a time. He cannot buy the fancy dog food that he gets his dog. I've noticed with certain items that I like that they're not available. And people may think, shit, I should get stuff now so that I'm not stuck not being able to get it later. Now, let's not even get into the discussion of shit like graphics cards. My God. But um, there's a lot of items that have been become more and more difficult to purchase. So A, you have the fact that people may act irrationally when they actually feel depressed or anxious. But B, they may feel that they need to buy their stuff right now because they may not be able to do so later. And, you know, several companies have said that they've been affected by the supply chain shortages or supply chain issues. Ford stock tanked earlier in the year when they made a mention that they may not be able to make their sales targets or their manufacturing targets as a result of it. If we turn our attention from consumers to businesses, what we see is a huge surge in capital expenditures. That is, businesses are investing as if they see a booming economy and expect the boom to continue. In short, the public's highly negative assessment of the economy is at odds with every other indicator I can think of. Again, what's going on? As I said, part of the answer is probably that inflation unnerves people even when their incomes are keeping up. And I, again, I'm going to make, to be clear, 100%, this is not scientific. I, again, I'm not an economist. I did not read this from some sort of statistic bureau. I don't think people's... I don't think that their incomes are actually keeping up with inflation if you're measuring inflation by the proper metrics. Again, if you're measuring inflation by the CPI, then maybe they're keeping up with inflation. If you are measuring inflation in terms of something like houses, which is one of the, the primary aspects of the American dream, whether you like it or not, whether you think it should be or not, that's something that's pounded into your head from childhood. I don't think that they are. Real, I mean... You know, did your income go up by 20 or 30% this year? Partisanship is also definitely a factor. Two thirds of Republicans believe the 2020 election was stolen. How much of a stretch is it for them to also believe that the Biden economy is terrible, whatever their personal experience? Now, again, I don't particularly like the idea of blaming the president whole, you know, whole cloth for things like gas prices. I think that is highly oversimplified. And I've said this in other videos where you, know, you could just look at things like what many energy and oil companies were saying in their 10 Qs last year before the election, while Trump was still president, we are going to be putting way less into capital expenditure and focusing on returning money to shareholders, aka we're going to be finding and pumping less oil. You guys get fucked. We're making our money back kind of thing. Gas prices being higher, that affects you, like Republican or Democrat. If anything, it may affect more people who are Republican. Cities where people may not, may be riding bikes or using public transportation tend to lean Democrat and areas where you need a car to get around uh, tend to lean Republican. I, I think stuff like that is going to affect you. If you are looking to buy a house in 2021 and you see what it's like now versus what it was like in 2018 or 19 or even 14, 15, and 16 under Obama, Regardless of political affiliation, you have to admit that this is insane. Finally, as I've always said, as I've as I also said, my apologies, it's implausible to assert that the tone of media coverage is irreverent. It's not even necessarily a partisan thing. My world is full of economic commentators who have spent years eager to moralize about the evils of inflation and who are bitterly disappointed when their hope for disaster failed to materialize a decade ago. Now they have their chance and they're surely having some effect on public perceptions. So it's important to keep perspective. This is an actual, ver actually a very good economy, albeit with some problems, don't let the do doomsayers tell you otherwise. And this is, this is kind of what bothers me. It's like when they say, this is actually a very good economy, albeit with some problems, although the doomsayers tell you otherwise. So you may have, again, you may have gotten a raise of 3 or 4%, but the house that you would like to purchase has gone up in price by 20 or 30 or 40%. The price of a car that you want to buy may have gone up by 5 or 10%. Uh, you, you may not be able to actually purchase the goods that you want to purchase. There may be limits on what you are able to purchase as a result of what's going on in the economy. He can't say out loud, there are issues so bad with this economy that, company, again, Tesla is actually selling a car without fucking USB ports in it, that you you have, there's a limit on the amount of, of raspberry pies you can buy, that there's an issue with dog food. It strikes me as out of touch. Again, instead of saying, we have serious problems, the fact that we are not able to supply things in the manner we were before, and the fact that not being able to supply things in the manner that we were before is part of what is leading to prices going out of control on a number of different items, 
No, it's 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 a good economy, albeit with some problems. Now, maybe if you are already wealthy, maybe if you already own a home, you don't see these as anything other than, quote, some problems. But if you are any one of the millions of people that he is just so confused about as to why you could possibly think this is such a horrible economy or why you could think that there's something bad about it, then maybe it's more than some problem. Maybe it's a serious problem. Maybe it's a problem that actually keeps you up at night. Maybe it's a problem that grays your hair. Maybe it's a problem that black pills you. There's a part of me that is kind of bothered by the idea that it's really just you. It's you and your it's you and your feelings. Yeah, there's a couple of issues, but everything's going great. It's just you and your feelings that are the problem. It's you and your your mental state. It's you and your inability to manage your feelings that is actually at, at fault here, it's not any of what's actually going on in reality. If this, honest to God, is a booming, amazing economy, why is half of Midtown Manhattan vacant? Why are more and more vendors imposing limits on what you can buy to where you can only buy one or two or three of this particular item? Why are companies changing their forecasts or changing the actual designs of their products because they cannot get what they used to get before? If they just came out and said, listen, shit's fucked up right now. Here is why. Here are the specific things that we intend to do to fix it. Here is why these things will fix it and not make it worse. I think it will be different. But I think what's making people nervous, and I think what contributes to, a, to, to low approval ratings for individuals in office right now, are when they pretend that everything's great. Because if you level with them and say, listen, shit's fucked up right now. Here's why we think it's fucked up right now. Here's what we think will make it better. Here's the timeline for this getting better. And here is why these particular things will make it better not make it worse, I think it would change the way people feel. But when you say, yeah, things are mostly great, it makes you seem out of touch, it makes people trust you less, and it makes them disapprove of what you're saying, even if you actually make sense, even if you may actually be factually correct in certain areas, even if you may actually be way more educated than some dumbass MacBook repairman, you know, reading the news with a cat in his chair, which again, Paul Krugman, he's way more educated as an economist than I am as a schmuck that just, you know, reads the news from time to time and comments from his MacBook repair chair. And when you're not really willing to level with where people are and when you're that genuinely filled with wonderment as to why people feel certain things, it makes it seem like you're just living in a different world. Like you're not looking at the same shit that so many average, ordinary people are looking at. And then you're going to wonder when somebody comes along that's less educated, that knows less about what's going on, that may know less about how to fix it, but is simply willing to acknowledge that there is a problem, that people may gravitate to that individual and believe what they have to say. I think it's really important to accept when there's a problem and not, again, just like, oh, that pesky inflation bug. Yeah, that thing where a $300,000 house is now 500000 That's a problem for ordinary people. That's a problem for people that want to start a family. That's a problem for people that want to feel secure in their retirement. I don't know. What do you guys think?